Oh boy. So, uh, unless you've been living under a rock or whatever over the last, like, 24 hours, you've probably heard that, uh, Daniel Jones got himself a quite the hefty extension. And I know a lot of Giants fans aren't happy about this. There's a lot of teams laughing at this. And, you know, I can somewhat understand that as seeing a quarterback who had 15 passing touchdowns and five interceptions with a little over like 3,500 yards or so, I think getting paid 40 mil is not the most ideal. And while I do completely understand the concerns surrounding how much money he's being paid, I really think that a lot of the issues people have with this contract are being overblown. Don't get me wrong. I don't like the price. I don't like seeing a guy at this level get paid $40 million a season. But at the end of the day, in the modern NFL, you just have to pay quarterbacks that much. We just saw Derek Carr, who, don't get me wrong, no disrespect to Derek Carr and all that. I think it's not that hot of a take to say that he was worse than Daniel Jones last season. And not to mention he's older. He just got paid four years, $150 million. So, like, if Derek Carr is getting that much money, how are we going to throw a hissy fit over Daniel Jones getting paid a little more? Not to mention, when you look at the details of Daniel Jones' contract, it's really not as bad as the base numbers would suggest. Now, obviously, when you look at it, four years, $160 million, make it around $40 million a year, that's not good. But when you look deeper into it, you see that he's only guaranteed $82 million within his first two seasons. So basically, this is an undercover two-year contract. If the Giants want to move on from him after year two, they can easily release him, trade him, do whatever they need to do, and it will have a very minimal effect on their cap space compared to a contract like Kenny Galladay, where it was just, it was hell to get rid of. The Giants are still going to take on dead cap from him. It, it was just, it was awful scenario. This Daniel Jones contract isn't like that. And I know obviously it's not ideal to see a front office still not entirely trust a quarterback to where you have to structure a contract like this. But personally, I would much rather just keep Daniel Jones for whatever he needs to be paid than have to completely restart, whether we start Tyrod next season, draft someone late in the first, trade up and give up assets, sign a Jimmy Garoppolo, or God, Al who, who knows? Who knows what would have happened if we didn't let Daniel Jones walk? And in addition to this, the cap hit for our cap space this season, again, isn't as bad as you think. It's only about 19 mil, which I think mathematically in my head I could be wrong. The Giants will have around 18 million dollars to spend in this offseason. And with the defense with a lot of holes and, you know, positions needing to be filled on offense as well, they can definitely sign a couple of solid players, not and then not to mention all of the draft capital they have. I believe they have 11 total picks. A lot of them are later in the draft, but hey man. You never know what kind of gems a GM like Joe Shane can find. But at the end of the day, I really just think fans are overreacting. I, compl I do completely understand that people don't like seeing Daniel Jones being paid that much. But there's just a certain uh, area of Giants Twitter, Giants fandom that just doesn't like Daniel Jones. You can tell they, they, they don't like Daniel Jones. They never have liked Daniel Jones. And again, I can somewhat understand it as he's had one genuinely good year out of the four or five, whatever he's been here now, drafted in a position he shouldn't have been drafted in. But at the same time, when are you going to let it go? You know, how are, like, how are you going to watch a guy lead this team to our first playoff berth since 2016? take us to the divisional round for the first time since we won the Super Bowl and find continuous ways to complain. Now, I understand, again, 40 mil. No bueno. Completely agree with you on that. I'm not happy with that. I've said on Twitter, I, I've said here, I've said everywhere I'm not happy with 40 mil. But you have to pay these quarterbacks. And with the way the cap is rising, with the way he's... Daniel Jones is more likely than not going to get better, this deal really could not be that bad. It could even be a good deal in a couple of seasons because we don't know how he's going to progress. We don't know where the cap's going to go. There are just so many different things going into this deal to where looking at at the base value of four years, 160 million is just not a good way to, to make a decision on how you feel about the contract. Hopefully he can prove his, uh, doubters who are still out there wrong hopefully he can somehow become the quarterback that can easily be worth 40 mil 
But regardless, I'm just happy we don't have to go through the reset process again. It was very tough having to move on from Eli Manning after basically my entire life of watching him. And as rough as a road as it's been with Daniel Jones, I am kind of glad that there is seemingly some stability at the quarterback position because we've seen teams go almost decades now without finding their guy at quarterback. So it's definitely nice to have at least a good quarterback there for the next four years. And who knows, maybe he can become a pro bowler. Maybe he can be this, maybe he can be that. There's no telling. It's all speculation. And honestly, a lot of Daniel Jones's career has been that. But it's going to be really fun next year to see this team progress, have Saquon Barkley back, hopefully. I know he was non-exclusive tag, so a team can still offer him a deal and the Giants can choose a match or not. But I really do think that they are going to sign him to a long-term deal uh, within the next couple of weeks or so, definitely before the season starts. I doubt that either side wants him playing on that franchise tag. But at the end of the day, uh, I got to say, I'm kind of happy with how the franchise tag deadline went. I'm, I'm cool with having both of the main focal points of the Giants offense back. I won't say team because uh, Dexter Lawrence is uh, probably, probably the best player. If not, if not him, then Andrew Thomas, regardless. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, this is my first video in a while. Some of y'all probably thought I was dead if you don't follow me on Twitter, but I just figured I'd hop on the mic for the first time in a minute and give my take on this whole uh, contract situation because it has been a doozy of an offseason so far. We aren't even to the draft. We aren't even through the official free agency stage. We have a while to go, and it's been a crazy ride. With that being said, I'm probably going to cut this video off here. Uh, if you like what you saw, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that, yada, yada. Uh, probably might might get back into the groove of uh, recording again I know I get I know it's been a while I think like three months at this point we'll see we'll see how things go see how uh, how busy I get between college and my work at band sided but for now again thank you for watching and I'll see you all later